Hello everyone. Now I am audible. Yes. Yes. Okay. So my friend and colleague Ashutosh has touched upon the basics of Python, and I will go through you through sequence, uh, which is basically a data structures, uh, tuples, list, and strings. The sequence types. There are three sequence types: Python, tuple, uh, which is uh, defined as in parentheses. Here is John as a string, 32, and CMSC as a list. So, what is a tuple? A tuple is a simple immutable order sequence of items, and items can be of fixed types. So, we can define tuple inside a string, a number, numeric number, a list, and a nested tuple. The second type is of string, uh, which we define as between quotes, John Smith. Uh, it is to a immutable type. Immutable type means we cannot change it later. When it is declared, it is not changeable. Uh, the point of a string and tuple is that conceptually very much like a tuple. And the third type of sequence is list. Define it between square brackets. Here too, it is a mutable, uh, the list is a mutable order sequence of items of mixed types. So list is mutable type, strings is of immutable, and tuple is also immutable. So if we define a list, we can change it later. So any item of list, such as two or John, if we define a list, I this equal to this, and we can then change the value of the list of order sequence. Because it's order sequence, we can access it through indexes. So indexes of number. So all three sequences types, tuples, strings, and lists share much of the same syntax and functionality. The key difference is, as we have mentioned earlier, tuples and strings are immutable, whereas lists are mutable. Uh, we will show some operations on sequences which are applied to all sequence types. All sequence types is lists, tuples, and strings. So most examples will show the operation performed on one. We will show it on tuples or list or on strings. So we can define tuples using parentheses and commas. So here tuple q is a variable. We define is equal to parentheses 23, a string ABC, a float, a tuple inside again, a nested tuple, and a string again definition, DEF in string. Uh, we can define list using square brackets and commas. So we define list where li is a variable, we are defining li as a list variable which contains abc as a string, 34 float number again a numeric number. And we can define string using quotes, uh, double quote, single quote or a multiple line strings which we can have defined with a triple quotes uh, which was stated in the third line. The string, this is the multi line string that uses triple quotes. So if we define to want to uh, define a string of multiple line, we have to define it under a triple quotes and go to the new line. Where? Defining a variable st, if we define where, where we have mentioned a comment only with the triple quotes, so it will be not be executed. If we define a variable st, then we define a multiple line strings. So this is the string, multi line string, which is referenced by st. So it is not a comment. The comment would be like this only. We have mentioned sequence is a ordered sequence, so we can access individual members of a tuple, list, or string using square bracket of array notations. And here, all the uh, sequence are zero based, as the indexing starts from zero. So, if we define a tuple, which is equals to between parentheses 23 string and this, 
So if you want to access the second item, the second item would be 1 because starting with 0. So if tu1, that means it will return a second item in the tuple which is abc. Which is uh, same as applicable in list 2. So list is goes to abc34. So li1 will return 34. And in string, string is also a sequence which is a sequence of characters. So st1 will return h is 0 then the first one is e. So it will return e. Uh, we can use indexes as a positive or a negative indices. So positive index counts starts from the left, but in the negative index it will start counting from the right. So positive index is T1, so it will return ABC, but if we a negative index starts from the right starting from minus 1. So count start from right starting with minus 1, so the last item is DEF, if we say minus 3, then from the right minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. Oh, sorry, minus 1, minus 2, oh, this way. <laughs> sorry, it's uh, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so minus index t square bracket minus 3 will return 4.56, which is a bit uh, There is a, also a function of slicing which returns a copy of a subset of sequences. So what is basically a size? It returns a copy of the container with a subset of the original members start copying from the first index and goes to the second last of the second index. So means uh, if t is a list or tuple, if we find t is tuple 23 abc this. So t 1 colon 4, it, slice, it will slice this and return a copy of this which contains starting from 1 so 1 is abc because index starts from 0 1 to the second last of the air, second index so 1 2 3 uh, we can slice with the negative index as well, where negative index counts starts from the end. So t1 colon minus 1 will start counting from the end and goes to this. So t minus 1 is actually here, it will go to the second last of minus 1, which is minus 2 to 3 and go to 1. So it will return abc 4.56 to 2 and 3. Where? Ah, in the last. Which one is not there? D F. It's a last index, so it returns second last of this. When we go index is slicing, one colon four means it, it's a positive index. So one colon four means it will start from the one. Starting index is one, and the end index will be four minus one, that is three. Now, we can also omit any of the indexes that is first index or second index. So if we omit the first index, to make, uh, it also returns a copy of the original members of sequence starting from the beginning of the container. So omit the first index, so it will start begin from the first one and that first one means 0 starting from 0 and goes to this. 2 is 2 minus 1, so 2, 3, which is first one, then ABC. If you omit the first index, it will start beginning from the 0, that is 0, 2. Uh, if we omit the second index, so it will go to the last end of the tuple or list or any character string. So if we omit second index, we will start from 2 and goes to the end of the sequence. So it will return 4.5623 and the last which is DEF.
uh, if we omit the first and second appearance, both of them, then we can make copy of the entire sequence. Means if t is this and t only color, we have omitted the first index and second index. So it will return copy of the entire sequence, and that will be a ABC a four point fix all the members. Now, note here the difference between these two lines are for mutable sequences. If the sequence is mutable, that is list, not string or tuple. So L2 equal to L1, it will refer both refer to a same reference. So if we change any of them, we have uh, declared a second list L2 which is equal to L1. So L2 and L1 will refer to the same memory reference of the list of L1 if we say L1 is this. So if we change L1, it will, it will take effect on L2. But if we declare L2 as a slicing of L1, so it, this returns a shallow copy. So if L1 omitting first and second index, so it will return whole copy of L1 and then assign it to L2. So both are now referring to the different memory locations. So if we change independent copies to references, so L1 is referring to another list. Values are will be the same, but the memory references are different. There are number of operators we, uh, which we can apply on, sequ uh, on sequences, uh, such as Boolean test, where whether a value exists in a list tuple or not, where if t is equals to a list of one, two, four, five containing values, so we can check if three in t, where t is list because 3 does not exist, so it will return false. Same is for here, it will return true. And 4 not in, because 4 exists, so it will again return false. Uh, for strings, we can test for substrings. So A is equals to a string, A, B, C, D, E, to C, character C in A. So C is a substring, which is here, so it will return 2. CD is a substring of this, it will also return a true and AC, where AC is not a substring, ABC will what would have been a substring, but AC is not a substring. So it will be returned false. Uh, the in keywords is also used in the syntax for for loops. As uh, we have gone through for loops as told by Yasuko, so we can loop in any list using for loops. So we can loop uh, as a uh, looping for so for in list. So it's a boolean test and that in was a iterable thing. So here in and the looping in for are totally different. The plus operator. The plus operator produces a new copy. You can list of string whose value is the concatenation of the string. So the plus here plus is actually overloaded for list objects, which list is a built-in types and plus sign is overloaded for the list types. So if we want to merge two sequences, here 1, 2, 3 is a tuple and 4, 5 is also tuple and we merge T1 and T2, so it will return a new copy of merge list of both of these. Similar for list and string. So hello plus empty string plus world, it will return hello space world. Uh, the star operators returns again a new tuple list of string and repeats the original content. So if uh, 1, 2, 3, which is a tuple, we op define a star operator in 3, so it will return a new copy of tuple, will, will, which will be repeated 3 times of values of this. So it will be 1, 2, 3, comma again 1, 2, 3, comma 1, 2, 3. Say for list and for string, hello operator 3, star operator 3, it will return a string, a new copy of string will be contain hello 3 times. Uh, mutability, tuples versus. As I uh, mentioned that list is mutable, but tuples is not mutable. 
immutable. So if list is equals to a string ABC this, so we can change the value of the list of any index by accessing the index accessing by index and equal to 45. So if we say li is equals to string ABC, so li 1 is here 23. So we have changed it li is equals to 45. So it will return the same list with value change from 23 to 45. But and we can change list in place. So this list actually as a main same memory reference of this list. So it's not a new copy of the list. It's a same list pointing to the main uh, same memory reference. But uh, tuples and strings are immutable. So if you define t is equals to uh, t equal 23 this and we try to change any of its values or by accessing through its index t2 is equals to 3.2 so python will return uh, error message which says that object doesn't support item assignment because people is immutable so it cannot support an item assignment so if we want to change a tuple so then we can make a fresh copy of tuple and then assign it with the same memory reference to t so we can say t is equals to this. Now we want to change that t is equals to not 4.56 or anything like that. We can say, uh, define a new list of tuples, then assign it to the t. But we cannot change it through accessing its index. Uh, the immutability of tuples means that they are faster than list. It can be anything else. It can be anything else, but we are just defining that t is first. T is contains tuple one comma two. Then we are assigning t is equals to one comma two comma three, or one comma two comma four. But the first assignment t was a different assignment. It cannot be because it's immutable. We cannot change it through accessing its index. So again, we, if you want t is one comma two comma three, so we have to again. Ref Defined it as t is equals to 1 comma 2 comma 3. So now execution will tell that t is equals to now 1 comma 2 comma 3. It's a new copy of t and the name assignment is the same. That only t has changed to this. So both are different copies. Uh, these are operations on list only because uh, <coughs> tuples and strings are immutable and only list is mutable. So we can there are number of operations which are applicable on list and we can perform uh, say append so if list is one uh, this thing and we want to append something last to the append there is a <coughs> function defined on list append so list is a list object so object uh, list object dot append and the value so here it will append a to the last of the list Uh, the second function is insert. Here too, we can insert with index value and <coughs> index number. We have to insert the list. So, two is the index position and i is the value. So we say li dot insert at index two comma value i. So we will return a list which is the same list but it will now contain i at the second index position. Uh, we have gone through the plus operator. There is again another method available extend. So what is plus of it creates a fresh list with a new memory reference plus operators we have gone to the plus order where we have said that if we want to merge two list list l l1 and list l2 we can just do it through l1 plus l2 but it will not contain a new memory reference that will return a new list of merged version of l1 and l2 but extend operates on the list li in place 
So extends is a function which will which arguments its arguments are list nine eight seven. So it will return the same list with extended values of nine eight seven. This is not two memory replace, it's the same list. Uh, there may be a confusing between extend and append. So extend takes a list as an argument, whereas append takes a singleton value. So if we try to append a list li dot append, so it will take a singleton, when it will be a nested list again. So li dot append, if we pass passed list as an argument. So it will append whole of list as a nested list on the original list where 1, 2, 3, 4 and the last value will be a list which contains 10, 11 and 12. Whereas in extend, the argument if we say li dot extend 10, 11, 12, the list would have been 1, 2, 1, this comma 10, comma 11, comma 12. Uh, list uh, on list we have many uh, methods including index count remove reverse sort so in reverse method if we use the reverse method which is li dot reverse it reverse the original list so if the list is 5268 and we perform and reverse operation on list li dot reverse. So now, now list li will be the reversed version of the same list. So it will be now eight six two five. Uh, similarly, short function will give you the, as expected, the sorted version of the list. There are number of things of tuples. Act Sorry? Yeah, it's some type. Huh. In that case, actually, list can contain a mixed type. But uh, while uh, using list in Python, we generally take list as a homogeneous mix items, not heterogeneous. For heterogeneous, I will, their availability is for tuples. Be a mixed type, and we cannot use short then. If some uh, two comma string five, uh, string b, and we use short, then it will return an error because shorting will not work on the numeric type and the character type. Which one? Uh, you can call some function is the user defined function. Yeah, we will take elements from the side. It's pass total list to this function. Then individually you can pick two or whatever the list is. You can define your own comparison function. Yeah, yeah the parameter will be the list. Of tuple. Actually, 
uh, when we have said that we can define tuple as a parenthesis. So parenthesis is not important in tuples. The only thing important is the comma of this. So if in the Python interpreter we write it as one comma, the Python interpreter will define it as a tuple. One is a singleton tuple containing a single element one. Python source parenthesis for clarity. Best practice, don't forget to comment. So if we say parenthesis without a comma, so it's, it is not a tuple, it's just a numeric number one. So trailing comma only required for the singletons. So if you want to define a tuple containing a single element, which is a singleton, we have to define a trailing comma containing a single element. And for empty string, we can, uh, sorry, tuple, there is a, a special syntax only containing parentheses. It's an empty tuple or a function tuple containing empty list. So, so there are lastly summary between tuples versus the list is list slower but more powerful than tuples because there are number of operators functions provided in Python with which we can operate on lists. Lists can be modified because it's uh, mutable and they have lots of handy operation and methods. Tuples are immutable and have fewer features. We can convert between tuples and list by we want to convert a tuple t where t is just tuple. We can say list is equals to list keyword inside that argument as a tuple. So this tuple will be converted to a list and will assign to a li. And vice versa, we can convert a list to a tuple. So tuple will be equal to a keyword tuple as a function. Pass the list, it will convert, return a tuple value and assign it to t. That's all about sequences, uh, some data structures. Now we can go through the modules. Uh, what is a module actually? A module is a file containing Python definition and statements. The file name is the module name with the suffix .py appended. So the file name would be say spam.py. Within the module, the module's name as a string is available as the global variable which is underscore underscore name underscore for instance use your It's a file, FIBO. We have defined a file, FIBO.py file. You can say it's a module file which contains uh, two definitions definition fibon, which returns a Fibonacci series up to n of series, and the second function is definition fib2, return fib to n in a list. Now we can go to the Python interpreter and Type a command import FIBO, where FIBO is the module name. So, when we say import FIBO, this does not import the functions which are available on the uh, module file. Actually, it imports the global variable name FIBO to the scope of that interpreter. Now, we can access the functions of FIBO through module name dot fib. 10,000. We will return the same thing and again FIBO.FIB and read. And if we say FIBO dot underscore, this is the global variable name of, it will return a string of file name FIBO. We can run modules. In Python, we can uh, there are errors and exceptions. Uh, the errors can be of syntax errors. The syntax error is also known as 
passing errors are perhaps the most common we will encounter is still learning. Uh, if we say here the statement while true print hello world, it will return an error with the square this thing. Uh, syntax error, invalid syntax. So it's a syntax error with the parser which is offending this. this. Colon is missing because, because here the colon while true colon. The syntax of Python is in any loop we have to say end with this as a colon. So here the colon is missing so it will return a syntax error. This is missing. Uh, errors and exceptions, uh, there is an error and exceptions. Exceptions is what even if a statement or expression is syntactically correct, there can be a programming, programming error where errors detecting during the executions are called exceptions. So it is a run type error, which is not detected on the pass type. So the error detected on the run type are called exceptions, where on the passing type it's a, where it will be a syntactical error or so on run time if we say 10 into 1 divided by 0, so it will return a exception this is a division by 0 error. 4 plus spam into 3 it will return an ex uh, exception because spam is not defined earlier. So it will drop because Python interpreter does not know what is spam here. Similarly, string plus string will return an error because it cannot convert string to numeric value or numeric value to string. All these are exceptions. So we can handle exception by try and accept. We can if we put a code between a try and exception block so and we say x is equals to input please enter a number here is a break except value error. So again if we enter a character which is not a number, it will raise a value error and goes on because while this is true. Uh, uh, try and accept statement, uh, by try and accept statement we can handle the exceptions. In try block, we have defined some function. If this function returns an error, we can catch it in the accept block here. And then we can handle it here. But in normal cases, if we, if we have not put our statement in try and accept block and just have written x equals to input this or anything user defined function and it had returned an exception, it will return an exception as we have pointed out earlier syntax error or 10 by 10 into 1 by 0 division by this error. The try statement works as follows. First the try clause, the statements between the try and accept keywords are executed. If no exception occurs, the accept clause is skipped and the execution of the try statement is finished. If an exception occurs during the execution of try clause, the rest of the clause of try is skipped, then its try matches with the exception named after the except keyword. So there are number of built in exception, maybe value with, uh, exception or keyboard interrupt exception. So we can define except a value error colon. So if the exception type in the try block matches with any of the except keywords, it will catch by the except block and execution continues of the try except will executed and execution of the try will be good on. If an exception occurs this does not match the exception named. So we can say we have only mentioned a except value error but the exception of the keyboard interrupt error. So if try gives an keyboard interrupt error so it will not match any of the exception value errors. So what will happen because handle is not found, it is unhandled exception and execution stops with the message as shown over. Uh, lastly, the 
key points about Python is that that indentation matters to code meaning because block in Python block structure is indicated by indentation. First assignment to a variable creates it. So variable types don't need to be declared because here the variable types is not integer float or something like that. The, the first thing we say x is equals to 3. So it creates and declared both x and the uh, define its value as equal to 3, which is a numeric value 3. Assignments in Python is through us equal to and comparison is through equal to equal to. Same is for any other comparison. For numbers, we expect to use plus, subtraction, multiplication, division are expected and special use of our plus are for string concatenation, tuples, strings or sequence merging and this can be used for string formatting. Logical operators are, wo are words, uh, here logical operators are and, or, not and not symbols. And the basic printing commands is in Python is print. So this is all I have to say. Now Shivji will tell you about the Django framework, uh, which is a web doubling framework for Python. Thank you. So, <coughs> Django is a web framework. It's all Python and uh, Python, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So core is all Python. And this is the outline of our PPT. And we both are going to uh, cover all these points. So uh, first of all, introduction. So this Django, not the Django, but the silent. And <coughs> The second point, Django is a high level Python web framework that increases rapid development and clean pragmatic design. Means it's based on Python. So Python is created by programmers. So programmers are really want to control what they are doing. So they just don't want to put anything extra. The logic is clear. So Django also has all Python means it inherit, inherit all qualities of Python. So, <coughs> so it's rapid development means uh, you don't have to do it, anything more than what you want. Louder. Louder. So you don't want to do anything that you don't want to do. Means you are just want to put your what you want in uh, very, very num uh, limited uh, number of uh, syntaxes. Means <coughs> and it's clean. All, all our uh, properties of Python means it's all Python. So the web framework for perfectness with deadline means those are programmers with, which uh, are perfectness by their nature. So they created this to be, uh, they want to uh, implement some web application as early as possible. This, yeah, the Django was created by a news agency, which uh, news agencies are very prone to changes. So they want it to be fast. Like they want to develop something new, so it's uh, not going to affect what they are using, and they are going to it's modular. Like you want to some you want to do something new, so you just put it uh, like a application, or there there is a project and there is an application. So you you will you can create a new application, and everything is available. Like uh, there are so many things like admin interface, so mo many modules are already present there. Next, so primary focus is. Dynamic database driven is everything that a framework should have it's in Django. Content based websites, they are normal, they can be built. And examples like Washington Post, eBay, Craigslist are using it. Google App Engine also is using it Django. Next. <coughs> and you heard about MVC uh, design better, model view and controller. But in case of Django, it's also divided into five things. Like uh, view is divided into views and templates. Means you can also separate your uh, 
what is going to be rendered is uh, separated by what what is your business logic well, your all logic is goes into the views but what you are going to render is goes in the templates and models models are those where you define your uh, schema this if there is a student and student has a profile so you are going to define something like student has a name roll number email so everything is uh, defined in models like whatever you want to do with uh, what what you want to have in the database corresponding uh, there, those are classes you can define and views are uh, i told views are uh, business those views contain business logic of your web, web application like you are going to be put something in the uh, like you want to do something with the profile thing means you want to uh, as simple like you want to have uh, you want to handle forms like somebody's uh, somebody's login uh, somebody's trying to login on login page he puts his username and password then uh, the thing that is in the uh, templates is just username password but everything that uh, like uh, it matches with the database where is the uh, uh, this uh, valid or not it goes in the views templates templates are just html with uh, some template text that provided by the zengo means you have something you are passing something from views like name name of a person so name is a variable you are passing and that variable you can show in templates by using template text that are going to be covered by x class uh, covered in a simple application controller controller is the uh, control you know heart of the framework this is it handles everything like request responses which page going to be rendered on which request which fun which method is, is going to be called all things are handled by and uh, uh, django has two things in this uh, one is settings file settings dot py file and a urls dot py file so though both are uh, part of a controller both acts as a controller for example <coughs> and this is the architecture like uh, this is a client and he puts a request and this all thing is zengo this request comes and request comes to urls urls decide if person is uh, putting something urls slash some admin uh, putting admin after slash means there is a setting for, uh, there is a line which tells zengo which method to call which view to uh, in view which method to call to handle this uh, url so url has uh, handling of the urls and then it goes to views views uh, views has uh, main views has uh, that definition that method that renders that html and passes some data everything you do uh, everything you want to do with the data and pass it to the uh, template and uh, that that goes to the templates you and uh, you done everything you want to do and just pass it the templates and uh, views as mod models connected with models means you you have a profile and you want to if somebody is uh, submitting a form like name roll number email id then that goes to the view and view pass it to the uh, uh, if in view you define updates this uh, objects this update profile if person put the data then it goes to the uh, update some there is method like profile dot objects dot all or you get the objects and you update uh, update that there are objects corresponding to model is a profile profile is profile is a class class is objects so you can call and save and update delete or something everything you want to models and then view send the response to back to the client this is all zengo so why zengo for web developers development so <coughs> Uh, this uh, you heard about ruby on rails or laravel in php so uh, all have the same mvc but in case of django modularity is increased means you divided views also you divided controller also means you have more control over what you want to show so this is flexible more flexible than others uh, provides auto generated web, web web admin means it already contains a uh, module which uh, which provides a interface to you update update create read delete everything that that has in the database like profile corresponding to profile there is a name roll number email so you can using that interface uh, which rendered on your browser you can 
delete a user, update his user's name, everything. So it's already provided by Zen. A prepackaged API for common means I, I have told model saves objects, so you can uh, call them by you ask, uh, initiate the object and you call like everything is in, you call uh, u dot update user u equals to say I say profile equals to something uh, profile dot objects dot all. Then I want to uh, do something with those objects. So it has all objects. You can update, delete, or something. So provides you template system to define HTML template for your web pages to avoid code duplication. Means there is a <coughs> you can uh, inherit templates also. Means you have a base dot HTML file, and in if you do 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 not want to put header or footer in every HTML page, so you create a base dot HTML and you inherit dot uh, inherit uh, those blocks like block header. So every header is there and block footer is there. So if you want to create another index.html file, so you uh, extend, you put extend base.html and if uh, whatever you want to do with the like header, you want to something put header in uh, something, you want to put new in the header or something in the footer. So you just extend or you put whatever you want on that place. So you don't want to repeat yourself every time to make templates. Next. So allows you to define what URL be for a given function. Means it's all on you. What what URL going to be? What just uh, if you define something URL admin? So you can have your freedom. You can uh, call any function like index URL doesn't have to be a function named index. So it's freedom. You can put any index as index can as a name uh, with views. So it's it's all freedom. You can. Do it. Allows you to separate business logic from the HTML. Means I have already told views are divided into views and templates. So views contains your all business logic and this contains all your rendering things. So all separated. Everything is Python. So schema, you don't have to do anything else. It's just Python. And these are the modules which provided by already provided by Django. This you can use these modules and if you don't want to use, you can create your own. So these are uh, you can modify them also on flight like you want something to add in admin so there is freedom to add something in admin you want to you want your you define something some model and you want to add in the you want you to flexibility to update delete something uh, those entries so you you register your models to the admin panel so those can be available you to admin so this is administration and authentication system is Django already provides you the uh, basic authentication system where user uh, you don't have to write like login and logout methods are already present. You just have to include in your templates or this. Forms and uh, comment system. Comment system is you want you want to just you have to include it. It's available. Form handling like when you write in HTML, you just uh, declare forms like uh, form as something input, input type, something text, input type, email. So you don't have to uh, put it, this in HTML. You can put it in another file, py file, py, uh, forms.py, and you declare their, uh, their form name uh, profile. This you want to somebody's data, uh, some person is going to put data in the, like that form has to have name, emails, all that. So you define it there in forms.py, and just you have to pass it to the views use pass it to the template and uh, you just have to uh, include it in your template and all form is going to be rendered and you have flexibility to modify it like you don't want to label like this uh, don't want the uh, you have input type this you can change everything sessions sessions are also provided by Django and this syndication framework RSS you know RSS means if there are weekly updates daily updates so you can have like if you are using, if you are creating a blog, you blog in on Django, so you can you can have provide a map where people can have updates. Like you are you created a post and somebody uh, subscribe to your RSS, then they can have their, uh, your excerpt of the post on their feed. So already provided by Django. Caching caching is like uh, you want to cache some variables on the client side, so you can. Uh, Fine, uh, like memory caching or display caching, so whole thing is good. Internationalization, localization are uh, 
like in india we have different languages so you can it's already uh, included you can have different lang uh, site in different languages so in hindi punjabi everything custom middleware is middle there is a for everything like handling templates it says a middleware means how it handles templates so if you don't want like i don't want this uh, handling so you can create your custom Now Abhishek is going to explain you a simple application and what are going to be the things. explain you how to create a new project so this is the main topic and you have to listen it very carefully and uh, if you want to note it down so you can note it down because without <coughs> these steps you cannot create your project or your application so these are the steps first is uh, create a project start an application i am going to explain you later create database mysql or uh, SQLite, define database settings in Satisfy, <coughs> define your models, add pluggable models, Next one. <coughs> write your templates, define your views, create your development, test application and end of the day you have to deploy your application. Now I am going to explain it one by one. Next. <coughs> so this is the first command, uh, Python is installed in your Ubuntu system. So you have just, uh, <coughs> you have to install. Django. So this is a command pip install Django. So if pip is not found in your system, so you have to just if you are using Ubuntu, so you have to just write sudo apt get python hyphen pip. So first you have create uh, you install the pip, then this command will run pip install Django. After that, <coughs> start project. So uh, when you install Django, so these settings, <coughs> these files, uh, manage.py and SQLite DB and my project, it's already, uh, it's <coughs> going to be created. So here, uh, let's see my project name is my project. So the second command is Django admin.py start project and project name. So this will create your project. Uh, here, here you can see the tree of my project. So and then go to the project, uh, project my project directory and create your app so here my app name is my app so then you have to run command python manage.py start app my app so this is a, a tree structure of this django <coughs> framework so first of my my project my project you, you uh, there is a manage.py which handles all the things then my app my app is the my app which I have created inside my project you can create so many app <coughs> how much you uh, how many you want to in, uh, install and then, uh, then the my project inside uh, actually project my project is a project name and inside project <coughs> there is a my project folder also so in my project folder there is a URL and settings file which is the controller so in in this file you can set up your whole projects <coughs> setting.py and url these are the basic more important file and the last one is the template which i have created template in my project <coughs> folder and there is a index.html which is my rendering page so next this is the settings by <coughs> my friend shivji told earlier model view controller so this comes under the controller Setting.py, when you created your project, so you have to just mention your <coughs> uh, installed app, my app. So these are the, <coughs> by default, when you create, uh, install the Django, so these are the by default directories, but you have to mention my app in installed app. And second one is the database. Database, here I am using the SQLite, you can use <coughs> MySQL and whatever you want to use. So if you are using MySQL, so here backend.mysql name is 
पाथ ऑफ द माई सिक्वल डेटा बेस एंड हियर इज योर डेटा बेस नेम बट इफ यू आर यूजिंग माई सिक्वल सो यू हैव टू मैंशन ऑल्सो यूजर नेम पासवर्ड पोर्ट पोर्ट नंबर दीज आर द थिंग यू हैव टू मैंशन इन योर सेटिंग डॉट पाई मॉडल डॉट पाई दिस कम्स अंडर द मॉडल व्यू कंट्रोलर सो हियर इज कम्स द मॉडल मॉडल इज नथिंग बट द योर डेटा बेज स्कीमा सो हियर आई एम गोइंग टू डी वी डॉट मॉडल्स दिस इज अ मॉडल प्री डिफाइंड मॉडल्स फ्रॉम द जेंगो जेंगो फ्रेमवर्क सो हियर आई एम ओनली जस्ट क्रिएटिंग द मॉडल दिस इज द सिंटेक्स ऑफ क्रिएटिंग टेबल एक्चुअली दिस ए क्लास प्रोफाइल प्रोफाइल मीन्स हियर आई एम क्रिएटिंग द टेबल एंड टेबल नेम इज माई एप अंडर स्कोर क्लास नेम सो हियर आई एम क्रिएटिंग द टेबल माई एप अंडर स्कोर प्रोफाइल एंड इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ दिस फील्ड मीन्स नेम रोल नंबर एक्सपीरियंस एंड ई मेल आई डी एंड दीज आर द क्लासेज ऑफ जेंगो विच हैव डिक्लेयर केयर फील्ड एंड इंटीजर फील्ड टेक्स फील्ड एंड ई मेल ई मेल फील्ड सो यू जस्ट राइट इट डाउन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज वॉट एवर योर नेम इज कैरेक्टर और टेक्सट और इंटीजर यू वॉन्ट टू सो ये दीज आर द ऑर्ग्यूमेंट्स विच इज द बाई डिफॉल्ट मैक्स नीम लिमिटेशन मीन्स मैक्स लेंथ मिनिमम लेंथ एंड नल इक्वल्स टू ट्रू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इन नल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज नल इक्वल्स टू ट्रू योर नॉट सो यू कैन मैंशन यर सो दीज आर द मॉडल आफ्टर क्रिएटिंग दिस फाइल यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस कमांड पाइथन मैनेज डॉट पाई मेक माइग्रेशन माई ऐप माई ऐप इज द नेम ऑफ योर ऐप सो वैन यू क्रिएट दिस फाइल सो यू हैव टू रन दिस कमांड मेक माइग्रेशन सो मेक माइग्रेशन विच गोइंग टू डू इज एक्चुअली इट क्रिएट्स अ पाइथन फाइल एंड विद द एस क्यू एल कमांड्स सो सो वैन यू रन दिस कमांड सो इट क्रिएट्स अ पाइथन फाइल एंड आफ्टर दैट पाइथन मैनेज डॉट पाई माइग्रेट सो वैन यू फायर दिस कमांड माइग्रेट सो दैट पाइथन फाइल विच ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड इट इट रन्स अगेन एंड इट क्रिएट्स अ डेटा बेस टेबल सो इफ यू रन दिस कमांड पाइथन माइग्रेट सो इट विल क्रिएट द प्रोफाइल टेबल विद दिस फील्ड्स एंड दिस फील्ड्स हैव द दिस कैरेक्टर फील्ड इन फील्ड ई मेल आई डी एंड रोल नंबर views this is a, actually comes under the template template has the two things one is the business logic and second is the html page so first is the this is the business uh, business logic so here i am importing my table my app dot model import profile profile is my table name and this is a <coughs> django shortcut render to response this is also module to rendering the page so here i am de just declaring the function index you can <coughs> do whatever you want to do any name i am using just index so here the profile profile dot object dot all this is uh, nothing but the orm object relation model so i am using that <coughs> command profile dot object dot all it's actually bytes all it's um, takes all the object which is in the profile in the profile table so <coughs> i am taking all the objects in the profile variable name and this one is the context context is uh, nothing but the dictionary so i am taking all variables and put into the profile is a tree word and profiles is a variable name so i am going to send the uh, return this function is returns <coughs> this context and which is return to response means this context is dictionary going to my index dot html page with this context dictionary and context dictionary consists of only here profile means all object from my profile table so this one is the url url again comes under the controller controller <coughs> has two uh, two files uh, one is the setting dot py and second one is the url so i have told you database and the <coughs> database and uh, you said you, you have to mention it setting dot py and second is the url url may this is the admin panel so when you <coughs> install django so this you are this one is the by default so here i am only just import my index uh, which i have index function which i have declared in my views and this is the url which i am going to <coughs> give you when you run this command run this project 
सो दिस इज द रेजेक्स रेजेक्स ऑफ इंडेक्स तो फर्स्ट पेज दिस इज गोइंग टू शो सो इम्पोर्ट इंडेक्स एंड आई एम यूजिंग दैट इंग्स मीन्स इफ दिस मीन्स इफ दिस रेजेक्स रेजेक्स इज मैच सो इट विल कॉल दिस फंक्शन इंडेक्स और इंडेक्स इज विच आई डिक्लेयर इन द व्यूज एंड व्यूज इट इज गोइंग टू रेंडर योर इंडेक्स डॉट एस टी एम एल फाइल नेक्स्ट सो अगेन सेटिंग्स सेटिंग विच फाइल इज गोइंग टू बी रेंडर सो आई हैव डिक्लेयर माई टेम्पलेट फोल्डर सो ये हियर यू हैव ऑल्सो मैंशन योर टेम्पलेट डिरेक्ट्री सो दिस इज माई बेस्ट डायरेक्ट्री एंड बेस्ट डायरेक्ट्री ऑल्सो हैव टेम्पलेट दिस इज क्रिएटेड बाई मी सो हियर यू हैव टू मैंशन इन टेम्पलेट इन सेटिंग डॉट बाई सो so this is my index dot html so index dot html actually i have sent my <coughs> profile as my context dictionary so here i am using that profile and <coughs> getting all those profile names so these are the django template syntax so you have to much remember this otherwise it shown an error so curly braces and after that you have to percent sign uh, here i am using the for loop actually i am rendering the <coughs> all the values in tabular format so these are the my headings and i am using for loop in my profile profile is nothing but the context dictionary this is the key of the dictionary so and you are using when the variable so you have to just put double curly braces so profile is the my <coughs> for to profile dot name first profile dot experience profile dot email these are the column name and you have to also mention there when it, <coughs> it is the for loop so mention in the otherwise it shown an error and uh, after that after you creating this so you have to run this command python manage dot py run server actually it will by default it runs on the 127.0.1 colon 8000 if you want to do <coughs> if you want to give another port or another ip address so you have to just mention from here run server that a port is available so it's no problem if uh, it doesn't to its soul it shows an error ki the port is not available so here is the by default port or i am <coughs> using that for and this is a your rendering page on your browser this is the 127.0 colon and this is the index page <coughs> so these are the values which it is stored in database and using html i am using this value and render in my html page so this is this is <coughs> main how to you can create the project and your application this is all okay thank you